Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are making a necklace by the request of actually my daughter. She wants to give this to a friend of mine who just had a baby. So we picked out uh, three of these beads here. And normally I make this as a, um, a necklace with three of these chains here. And then we braid them together. And you can do large beads or small. These are like a rock and then some... Um, other different semi-precious stones and uh, today we've got some crystals for you and um, we're just going to concentrate on using three and then it's going to be braided together with two other chains the supplies you're going to need is a 26 gauge um, this is a silver non-tarnishing wire and um, this one I've got at this local store wiredupbeads.com uh, non-tarnishing is the key it's a 30 yard spool and uh, we are going to use a finding, uh, whatever one you want. I like to use these toggle findings, your beads, your crochet hook. This is a K, which is a 10 and a half in the US, or a six and a half millimeter. And then your tools, this is a round nose plier, a crimper, and a cutter. Or you can use a three in one, which has all three together with a side cutter in the middle, a crimper, and then the round nose plier. All right, so gather your supplies and let's get started. We've got our wire and our beads. The beads are in the right order. And then you've got your crochet hook nearby. Go ahead and slip on the beads in the order that you want. Um, just got three beads here. This is what my daughter has picked out. So we're going to use these today. And then uh, you want to make a slip knot and leave about two inches um, or five centimeters and um, and then make a slip knot. I just wind it around my finger and then push through that extra. And with that part that's pushed through, I'm going to slip my crochet hook through and then tighten it up. And that becomes one that's your first loop on here and we're going to make uh, 27 of these uh, chains okay so we're going to chain and the first one is the hardest we want to pinch here and kind of hold and keep that shape and guide this through and make sure and size it get the right size by pulling it all the way back to where it's the correct gauge if you do it here you're not going to be able to get it over your hook later so um, you're going to wire over here and pull through and make a loop. So we've got the uh, three chains on here now. Go all the way to 27 and meet me back up. Now that you've got the 27, we're going to twist it and see how it's all kind of twisted up here. We're going to flatten it out. I've still got attached to my um, silver wire here. I've still got all these um, waiting to come on. Okay, so they're just sitting there. Um, make sure I've got 27. I've got one, two, three. I did one too many, but that's okay. I don't like to undo the wire or else you might have a problem with the crimping. So <clears throat> now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load on this bead and then I'm going to um, wire over and grab on through it and pull it through this loop. And that's gonna lock it into position. And then I like to tighten that up uh, there here. So I put it on, back on the back of, of, for my gauge, but tighten it up as tight as I can uh, for this to be in place and see how it has a big chain behind it. All right, now I want to chain one. That's it. Now I'm going to load on the next one. And if I have a good side or a bad side to this, I want to do this now and say I want this to be on the front, then I'm going to chain because this wire is going to be exposed on the back side of it. And I'm going to pull all the way through. Okay. And then we can line that up to where it, it is uh, in the middle. So you kind of have to do a little bit of tugging and pulling to get this chain to line up the way you want it. Okay, so I've got that all lined the way I want it and now I'm going to chain one again. All right, 
So that's gonna create a space between these two here. Now you can also chain two if you decide that you just want a little bit more gap space between these, then go right ahead. I've already got the chain one, so we're gonna load on this next bead. Grab it from anywhere, because this is pretty much the same anywhere around here, and it's not gonna matter, it's gonna spin. Go ahead and pull that on through. Trying to avoid this other chain here, there we go. All right, now. All right, so now we're going to finish and do 27 to finish this line. Go ahead and make 27. One, two, and I'll meet you back at the end. Three. Now I've got 27 here, I'm ready to finish. And um, I'm gonna loop one more and then we're gonna pull this on through. Okay, I did the one more just because I had had an extra one at the beginning, so I'm just trying to make it even. All right, once I pull this through, I can cut it at the, about the two inch mark, okay. and then I don't need this one anymore. Okay, this is my chain, okay? And by itself, it's kind of like, oh, it's like really lopsided. Now, if you just had a few of the smaller beads, kind of like this one, then you could do a nice delicate, but because I'm doing these larger stones, I'm going to, um, or gems, I'm going to make two more of these strands. So now I want you to do 60 of these chains and you're not gonna load any beads on, so do two strands with 60 chains. Okay, so now you have three strands. I'm sorry, it's kinda hard to see on this table here, but we've got three strands here. Uh, one, two, three, and we want to lay them out in front of us so that we can braid it. And in order to braid it correctly, we want to get them together and so we're gonna match up these three uh, chains on the end, all right? So it doesn't matter how they're laying because you are gonna you can twist them. That's the great part about having them all wire like this. They can be um, put in the right spot. So we're gonna twist these together and go ahead and twist tightly all of these consistently and just spin it around your fingers until you get a nice fine twist. Okay, so you've got these very well twisted together. They're not coming apart, and we're going to twist it until the very end, and um, we can actually uh, keep these strands here like they are, and then we're going to put one of our little findings on here. Okay, so now that we've got this ready, we can separate them apart like we're going to do a braid. Okay, so we've got our strands separated. They're all together, and we just want to, um, I just start with this one in the middle that has all the beads on it, and I'm just going to braid, just, just a three-stranded braid, no particular rhyme or reason. And I try not to make it too tight. I sort of keep my thumb up here and, and keep it nice and loose. And I may have to move these out of the way and, and not so that they're not caught on each other while we go. And just continue braiding until you get to the very end. flat as you go. Coming to my first bead. And you have to make the decision if you want to uh, move something uh, over around it or go in between the next bead. So this is kind of where we where we are. It's like, okay, well do I do I go um, over it or um, between it? In this case, we're going to put some beads uh, between it. And then this goes under. And so you're just doing like a normal braid. And it just gets just kind of this loose design. And sometimes I'll, I'll um, go back and go, ah, I don't like how I did that. And then kind of flip it around. Kind of mess with it and see if I see if I like how it's working or I'll I'll take it apart and um, redo it. So this is the part that you have the opportunity to say, okay, I like this design or I don't like this design. 
So, um, let's see. Make this one. I'm coming to the end and the way I've got some of these it looks like one of them is longer than the other and that does happen because you might tend to pull these other ones tighter around sometimes this ends up being the main feature strand and so I'll come back through and kind of tug on that line until it works its way in there evenly go back up here and you can still make adjustments and that's why it's nice to keep this loose and go ahead and pinch these together and do what you did before. Twist it tightly there at the end and then start going consistently. You wanna use the same technique you used on the other side. I like to kind of curl them around my finger. That's why it's nice to have the two inches or more. This one's actually a little bit longer than that. Like I said, that's about a little over five centimeters. Two inches is a little over five centimeters, I should say. Okay, so I've got my end here. And then this middle part, I look at this, I go, am I happy with this? Well, personally, I'm not happy with this. So I'm going to um, mess with it and kind of manipulate the wires. That's what's nice about this, this type of uh, design here because you can really um, uh, try and make a change afterward. Now, the way that I've got it here, I'm like, oh, I'm not really sure if I like that. So I can, um, looks like I did something a little funny to it. Well, I can actually change um, the way that I did it um, just by um, messing with it afterward. So maybe, um, maybe I go around here like this and trap that in. And I think that looks nice. Because the person you're giving it to isn't going to make a change like that. They're gonna leave it in the way that you made it. Kind of a kind of a messy jewelry thing <laughs> it's it's not it doesn't have to be perfect and so this is the way it'll face on the neck I mean, I'm gonna remove this make it easier to see okay so we're at the point where we need to connect them I want to make sure that this is flat it should be about 21 inches um, which I think is 54 centimeters and um, we can check that from um, from the end to end, this is actually a 16, and so I want to have about an inch uh, on the ends here. Okay, so I want to have um, I want to have two and a half centimeters or an inch from here to my first um, toggle or clasp, and so I'm going to go ahead and put on my um, I'm gonna, because I'm right-handed, what I do is I think about how I would put it on and how I would put it on is I would like to approach it by putting it through here and attaching it. So my right hand, I would like it on the right-hand side. So I think about that. Um, like if you have one of those little lobster claw things for your, um, for your necklace, um, think about um, who you're giving it to. If you're giving it to someone who's left-handed, you might wanna flip-flop it. So for me, I'm going to put it on the right because I know the person we're giving it to is on the right. So we're going to slip this end on of your finding, whatever kind you're doing. And um, then we're going to twist it around. And this is where you can uh, use your pliers and you wanna get it as tight as you can around here, okay, at the base. Okay, and this, is, this loop is now secure in here, but we wanna get it even more secure and we wanna get this all the way around. So I'm going to pull it tight 
and we're gonna go around here. So I can do this with my hands and I can keep it all the way up to the top or I can go all the way down to the bottom. If you're not very good about clipping it uh, and getting it really tight up here, um, you can go all the way down to the bottom and hide the rough edge down there. If you know how to um, clip it tight, you can clip it up here at the top and um, and get that nice and rough. Let's go ahead, or nice and uh, crimped. So let's go ahead and cut it. And I'm gonna use my little angled cutters here. And then we wanna make this edge nice and uh, crimped and smooth. So I'm gonna use this. And I have a, like a flat crimper on this one, on this tool. And so I like to just crimp this part real flat. Okay, and then I use my finger to gauge and test if it's going to be um, nice and um, if it's going to be rough or it's going to look nice for them. Okay, so that's all flattened out. Let me make sure all the rough spots are gone. If it's if you're using the multi kit you, you know, tool, be sure and don't use this. Um, this side cutter here or else you're going to ruin your work okay so that's nice and flat i'm going to go to the other side and put on my uh, receiving end okay so i'm going to put that down here it's about an inch in and you can measure and so that makes this an 18 inch necklace now it makes it a little bit longer because this particular um, type of type of finding um, adds a little bit of a length so if you want it to make it a little shorter you can come down and move it accordingly. And so now I'm just gonna go around and then if I find I can't uh, handle that, I'm gonna go ahead and use my pliers to pull on it instead of using my big hands. Okay, and I'll show you how to go all the way down. So like if I don't wanna make it um, go all the way up, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go off screen here. If I wanna go all the way down into here, I just keep going and keep winding around. See how it's just this nice little braid? And then I wanna get it down in here. Now, the, the key is um, I don't want to, when I clip this, I need to make sure not clip my necklace. So you wanna be very careful about where you're going. Okay, so let's flip it around to that side. I'm gonna get it as close as I can, and before I make my cut, I wanna check, and I'm gonna get it as close as possible. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my crimper and smash it down there. Now, if you get it too hard, it, uh, if your gauge is um, thin, like the 26 gauge, um, be careful because you can uh, crimp too hard and break uh, your wire for your main feature of your necklace. So we don't wanna get those in there. Okay, so now my necklace is actually done. There's everything smooth, it feels good, and we are ready to put this thing together. This is kind of like a little Mickey Mouse necklace. See how that works? <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> so it's a Mickey Mouse necklace. <laughs> and um, we're gonna put this toggle in here, and when we present it to her, we can lay it flat in a gift box or you can get one that's um, rounded or in a square box and um, put some nice pretty tissue in that and see how pretty that looks. And then when she gets it, she can put it on and mold it and you can mold it first like if you're doing this one. So see how that works. So we've got a Mickey Mouse necklace. Isn't that cute? Okay. So, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you'd like to do it with a three strand with um, beads going the entire way up, um, you'll need to um, do about, um, I'll make another video, but basically you're gonna go about 16 in and then start putting your beads in. And uh, you're going to go every other one. And just so you know, you can, if they're too small, you can put two in one particular one and then um, just make it to where the entire length before you braid it up is about 21 inches. All right, thank you again for joining me at Good Knit Kisses. I hope you have a great day and happy crafting. Bye-bye.